All right, let's talk about barrel tuners. I've had an overwhelming request to install the new V2 EC tuner. And those who've been following my channel know that I build a lot of NRL 22 or PRS 22 rimfire rifles. So in this video, we're gonna install one on a Voodoo V22 that I barreled up here. And we're gonna see what kind of performance we get downrange. I'm gonna show you guys the process of how I install these tuners onto this barreled action without using the adapter. Now there's obviously the half by 28 adapters. I'm gonna basically explain why I don't thread these barrels half by 28, uh, specifically how it affects the tempering of the barrel as well as its accuracy. So we're gonna install this based off Eric Cortina's uh, recommendations on his print diagram. This EC tuner, which has a 1.25 ID, and then the OD is uh, 1.5-ish. And we're gonna show you how it looks like with a 1.20 contour. Now, one of the questions that I get quite often is how repeatable are these tuners? And that's something I really am kind of up in the air with. I'm not 100% sold that these tuners are, you know, repeatable as they are. Then again, I haven't used a lot of ECV2 tuners. So we're going to do some testing. Not only are we going to tune this barreled action in, we're going to find out how repeatable it is by detuning the barrel and then going back to its original setting. Now, folks that actually compete in NRL 22 or 22 rimfire, they know that the 22 long rifle itself um, tends to kind of change its point of impact. Your zero likes to change quite a bit depending on the temperature. That's the reason why on competitions they allow you to zero out your scope before uh, shooting the match. So if you're interested to see how well the EC tuner works and if this is going to suit your needs, you guys stick around. You'll like this one. All right, so I have this barrel removed from the Voodoo V22 action. This is a Schillen Select Match um, barrel, match grade barrel, 1 in 16 twist, and the outside diameter is a 1.20 inch straight contour. Now, this is a very heavy contour barrel, specifically designed to keep the harmonics tamed, as well as give overall um, a better balance of the rifle. So, first thing we want to do is see how it looks like on the barrel. Now, like I said, the barrel is a 1.20 inch con straight contour barrel. The inside diameter of the EC V2 tuner, which we're going to install, this black nitride version, is a 1.25 inch diameter. So, you got a 50 thousandths gap that you're going to see in between the actual tuner itself and the barrel. Aesthetically, that could be displeasing to some. Uh, for this build, uh, the client didn't really care and Honestly, it doesn't look too bad with a 1.20 inch straight contour. However, if you go skinnier than this, that's where you could have some problems and make it look, you know, aesthetically not pleasing. So there are adapters out there for a, a half by 28 in which it will taper down to whatever contour you um, is close to it. And a gunsmith could actually cut back that contour to get the outside diameter of that taper close uh, closely to match the contour of the barrel. Uh, however, I don't like to thread anything lower uh, than a one inch with one of these straight contour barrels. And the reason for it is because the barrel manufacturer itself, if you guys aren't aware, Schillen Select Match Barrel does use button style rifling, which means a button will go pass through the actual bore, cutting the lands and grooves, basically swaging the material out. The barrel is then stress relieved from the manufacturer with their process, either by heat or cryogenically treated which gets the molecules of the barrel back in line and gets rid of the, uh, the weird harmonics and the um, tight spots of the barrel. So when you start cutting the barrel down to basically a half inch diameter, again, this is a one inch, half inch is roughly the inside circle of this barrel itself. You're removing a lot of material, inducing a lot of heat. On top of that, you are creating a whipping point of the barrel. A big heavy contour barrel like this really tames the harmonics down to begin with. Now at the end of the muzzle, which is the most crucial part of the actual rifle platform for accuracy, you are now creating a very small whipping point. Again, with the barrel tempering removed, that could cause accuracy issues. And from my testing, now testing over 400 rifles this year alone, um, and testing quite a few rifles that had the half by 28, I consistently seen accuracy degradation when I threaded a barrel half by 28 with a very heavy contour like this. So with that said, the best way to install the EC tuner is to go with the recommendation on Eric Cortina's diagram here. Now he has it listed with a 1.25 diameter barrel. Again, we are 50,000 short, but what we're gonna do is turn down to about one inch right here 
and then do the threading, which is one inch with 20 TPI. That way we can go ahead and install the barrel. So let me go ahead and get this all done up. I'll place a mark and we'll, we'll cut that back um, to about one inch and then get ready for the one inch by 20 TPI thread. Okay, 1.078, almost there. Okay, the outside diameter is exactly 995. And then the uh, tendon length should be about one inch and 150 thou. We are getting one inch, I got a one inch adapter, and 149 and 510 thou. So we're gonna call that good within spec here. All right, so the front section of this before the threads is calling for 450 thou at a 0 0.935, 935 thou diameter. So got that all done up here. You can see this. This front section here is exactly 450 thou. And I think I'm slightly just under the recommended diameter here. Well, 935, so right on the money. So basically this little section here of the actual uh, muzzle is gonna be where the actual O-ring of the EC tuner rides on. That O-ring is, if you get this thing to focus, is right here, pointing out on the screen. That's gonna basically keep all the solvents and stuff um, uh, getting down into the threads of the muzzle, which was a complaint on the original V1 tuner when guys were cleaning their rifles. Uh, the solvent was getting down to the threads and causing, uh, you know, with a chromoly barrel causing rusting and whatnot. But this being a stainless steel barrel, it's still a good idea. I think this is an awesome design implemented to put an O-ring there uh, for that O-ring to ride on. So now we have the actual tenon pretty much done. Uh, we are going to basically get this thing set up to cut 20 TPI on this portion here. Okay, so I got the lathe set up to cut 20 TPI. I'm using an ice car full actual thread insert so this is a full profile thread insert it is a uh, 16 er at 20 tpi this cuts really good threads now my limitations on this lathe is obviously the rpm and the fact that i don't have a brake lathe stop so we're going to be cutting this thing at about a 220 rpm at 20 tpi there you go so we uh, check the thread pitch on that and see what it looks like. All right, so the thread pitch gauge is showing exactly 20 TPI. So we are good to go. Okay, so I got the muzzle tenon all done for the EC tuner. Now let's do some test fit. Uh, one thing I did do different here is I added a little bit of a chamfer here at this edge. That way when the front of this barrel goes over the actual O-ring here, it doesn't have, um, you know, that doesn't basically cut it. So there's a small little chamfer here that I also did polish out. The threads I have pretty tight, that way to kind of reduce the backlash, even though there will be uh, a spring here pushing up against the threads itself. I think it's just proper machining techniques to Make sure your threads are nice and tight. So you can see here there's zero play at all. So it threads nice and smooth. You can see it going up and down really easy. Once you get to the front of this muzzle here, it's going to go right over that O-ring. Right there. Make sure I don't cut that. It still feels really smooth. So that's without the actual spring tension itself. I could obviously screw that down to where it goes down pretty, um, pretty far. So... I think the threads are done. We're gonna go ahead, put the, get the barrel out of the lathe here, make sure there's no scratches on the actual barrel. Um, if anything, I'll just polish it out real quick. But this uh, muzzle itself should be done, ready to go. And we'll get this back onto the action and get some testing done. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is throw a reference mark, something to where we have a line to put the tuner on and, and reference up against. So we're gonna do a double chevron as you can see here make sure it's all lined up looks good so we're going to go ahead and burn this this is a 40 watt laser let me 
Make sure I got the settings correct. And we're doing, we're basically doing an anneal mark. So it's not going to engrave pretty deep. It's just going to do a nice black line. That's exactly what I'm looking for right here. All right, so that came out pretty good. Get this thing to focus. And the alignment mark is right there. Looking very, very shiny. And this tuner is pretty much done. So we are ready to go out to the range and basically see what this EC Tuner V2 could do. All right, folks, so we are at the range and we have the Voodoo out here at 50 yards. It is 22 and three quarter inch long barrel and we have it sitting in a XLR uh, Element 4.0 chassis, Valdata G2 scope on it. We'll get this thing tuned in and I'll show you guys the results. Okay, let's take a look at these groups. Now, starting off at setting zero, point of aim was all on these little crosshairs here and the uh, tuner goes up in five increments. So basically you start with the tuner all the way out and then you start screwing it towards the actual action. So starting at zero, those are the first two shots. I was doing two to three to five shot groups depending on if the groups are improving or not. And you can definitely tell looking at this, a quick little close up, it definitely is doing something. The tuner is definitely doing something with their harmonics. I got a couple one hole groups here. So this was zero, five, 10 started to kind of Kind of tightened up that was 15 that tightened up then back then open back up to when i went to setting 20. this was 25 30 35 40. i did five shots there then 45 had a little bit of uh kind of a vertical stringing then 50. then when back to zero so that's one full revolution and that one shot a really really tight group um, so that's a good group there. So this will then will be one revolution and five right here still holding a node one revolution and 10 one revolution and 15 and that's another really tight group there. So uh, went to uh, 20 25 30 and 35. So uh, with this said it looks like what we're going to do now is test out a couple accuracy nodes if looking at this i'm i want to be somewhere where it's pretty repeatable so we'll probably stick to this node here and we'll retest this node as well and then what i'm going to do also is detune the rifle to an accuracy node which i know didn't work which will be right here rev one revolution 45 and then we'll see if this uh, tuner is repeatable so the next five shots that i did is with a setting with one full revolution and this was the five shot group and you can see that it kind of opened up quite a bit i then went ahead and went to setting 15 which is um one full revolution plus 15 which is the next setting that i found here on the left and comparing that that's exactly the same size group so not really a change here and uh, from here i started just kind of playing around with with the tuner to see if i could get it to tighten up with a five shot group and not really seeing much of a difference at all so uh, kind of displeasing to see this results as of right now. Okay, so I found a group that seems to hold a pretty tight node. Um, I went all the way back out to the original setting, which was just backing it all the way out to where I had it to begin with and went to number 15. So the setting number 15, what we're gonna do now is basically to shoot another five shots um, the way it is and see if it holds a group. Now I'm gonna shoot it right next to the last five shot group and see if it holds true and what we're going to do is detune the thing and then go back to originally what it was and see if it holds that to the right of the last five shot group i hit low
All right. So we did have one drop low that could be the ammo, um, but the group, the group did hold true. So let me go ahead and detune the rifle. Went all the way back out to zero and come back to it. So five, 10, 15, all right. So now I am back to the original setting. I'm back to the original setting back on 15 after detuning this thing. And let's do another five shot group. See if it holds that. Whoa, way far left. <laughs> what happened? You guys saw that on, on camera there. Two outliers and then three stacking on each other. Now, the question and the answer to this is, does a tuner help out with this scenario? And the, and the answer to this is actually no. The tuner will only tune good ammunition that the rifle absolutely likes. And uh, what I could tell from this rifle, since I built this thing without a tuner, tested it beforehand, the client did send this thing back to me to put the tuner on. This thing absolutely shot lights out before we had a tuner put installed um, with this particular ammo, actually the same ammo I am shooting today. And uh, with the work I've done to it and putting a tuner on, it definitely has affected it quite a bit. And I think he's gonna have to now find some ammo that this rifle's gonna like and hopefully find a tuner setting that works. So the draw conclusion for the EC Tuner V2, um, particularly for a straight contour barrel in a rifle like this, um, you've seen what I did. I, I'm approaching this very non-biased, as you could tell. Uh, doing the whole testing with the tuner settings and everything. Found some really good one hole shots, but when I go to retest the actual repeatability on the shot, five shot groups, you can see that it just falls apart. Um, regardless of what I do, try to find another tune setting or not. So this is just my results of one of many, obviously, that's gonna be out on the internet. Um, again, I, I really think tuners, there's a place for them. Um, but for folks that are kind of wanting to put tuners to, in hopes of getting a 22 long rifle or their 22 long rifle to shoot accurate with the ammo they have, uh, they're going to run into the same kind of rabbit hole that I'm seeing right here. I did get two five shot groups that were pretty repeatable, minus this one that dropped low here. And then detuning the rifle and going back to it, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Had two outliers here and then one here. And I never seen those two outliers on any of the five shot groups or three shot testing that we're doing here. So I don't know what happened. It could have been just two uh, bad batches of ammo. I mean, that's the kind of the ball game with the 22 long rifle. But like I mentioned, um, if you're considering a barrel tuner for your 22 long rifle, I really highly suggest that you should do some lot testing first uh, for the rifle that you have and then I contemplate on if you need a tuner or not. You know, I think a lot of guys are jumping on board with what they see online, um, kind of, you know, not really knowing how tuners really work. A tuner doesn't tune the ammunition, it tunes the barrel. So basically how it works is once you find a tune setting on the barrel, that barrel particularly will tame down the harmonics and will shoot the majority of 22 long rifle uh, pretty accurately. So leaving it at setting number 15, um, what I could do is just test some other lots of ammo that I have. Unfortunately, I didn't take it out there out here with me. I kind of wanted to see what this particular rifle did, uh, comparing its original results when I shipped it to the client. And then now that I put the tuner on, um, what I was seeing uh, before were consistent five shot groups like this. And, you know, that's kind of my standard when I build these rifles. And the reason why I actually kind of like to brag that my 22 long rifle builds do not need a tuner because uh, this is what I look for. I will do basically the same kind of testing, five shot groups, and ensure that my rifles that I build at 50 yards will hold a 0.3 inch um, uh, consistent five shot group 
and a sub one inch at 100 yards. All right, shooting the Rimax. That was the booty right there with the EC tuner. Is it grouping yet? Yeah. Is the first? That's the first ten shots out of that barrel. Okay, so this one is a Rimax, 24 inch without a barrel tuner. Straight, same straight contour, one two zero Schillen Select Match. Okay, so shooting the Rimax, uh, we basically got it all sighted in. Uh, the wind did pick up quite a bit, so we have a little bit of horizontal stringing. But you can see the groups there are pretty damn good. And that doesn't have any kind of barrel tuner. Shooting uh, SK Rifle Match, comparing that to the Voodoo here, it's very identical on the group size. So like I said, when I test my rifles, <laughs> they'll shoot a .3 or better. And no need for a barrel tuner. And there's a uh, solid proof of that right there. Well, folks, like I said, um, the EC tuner definitely does help. You can see the results downrange. Obviously, I approached this in a non-biased way. Um, I'd like to know what you guys think. If you guys had really good results with the EC tuner, comment below. I think the EC tuner really helps out those barrels that are a skinnier contour, uh, like the you know the Sendero style contours or the Kukri's from the from the Voodoo's. Um, but with a straight contoured barrel. I think the harmonics are already tamed because of that really big rigid barrel that a tuner only helps very minutely. We're talking very, very small amount and that it really depends on the ammo you are shooting. So again, in my conclusion, you know, from my testing and building a lot of these rifles, I highly suggest uh, doing lot testing before contemplating on a tuner. But you know, again, that's just my opinion. Comment below, let me know what you guys think and I appreciate you guys watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video.